In this video, we'll continue to see the response of a system with an external force acting on it, as seen in this figure here. More specifically, this force is of an harmonic type, as given by this expression. We've seen that the response of the system, the displacement x as function of time, is given by an expression like this. And we can divide this expression in two parts. The first is the part that influences the transient response, and the second is the part that influences the steady state response. So this steady state response then will have an amplitude given by this capital X, and it has a phase angle, which is the difference, the phase difference between the response and the forcing, which is given by this uh, symbol, the Greek letter phi. We've seen the expressions for both of these terms, x and phi, which is given here in this script in lines 9 and 10. It happens that we can manipulate these expressions a bit by introducing two other quantities. The first one is the frequency ratio, so it is the ratio between the frequency of the excitation, omega, and the natural frequency of the system. So whatever is the frequency that you have on your force, you can uh, relate that to the natural frequency and see if you are exciting the system below its natural frequency, which will be r less than 1, or above the natural frequency, which will uh, be related to an r greater than 1. There's also this quantity that we call the static delta, which is related to the situation of applying a static force with this amplitude F0 in our system. If we do that in a static form, the displacement x will be given by this expression here that comes from the uh, Hooke law. So the response of the system will be given related to this quantity here, the static delta, which is the displacement if we put a static force with this amplitude in our system. And we'll also use z as the damping factor, which uh, we've already seen uh, in previous videos. If we put all these, these three terms into these two equations, we'll find these two other uh, expressions. They are equivalent to the first ones. So the displacement, the amplitude in steady state is given by this expression, which is a function of the static delta, the frequency ratio r, and the damping factor zeta. And similarly, phi is given as function of zeta and r. One further step is that we can divide this uh, amplitude of the response on the steady state by the static delta itself, so we have uh, what we call the amplification factor. So let's have a look of what this amplification factor in phi look like as a function of this frequency ratio r. So this is our amplification factor, or m, as a function of the frequency ratio, the, diff the ratio of the forcing frequency by the natural frequency. We see that if this frequency ratio is below 1, the amplification factor increases with frequency. So, as we have zero frequency, if we have a, st a static case, our displacement uh, is exactly the static delta, so we don't have any amplification. But as we increase the frequency, the displacement in steady state will increase and it can go up as high as we're looking here at this uh, figure specifically as high as 1.6, 1.7. As the frequency ratio is greater than 1, we can see that the amplification starts decreasing and it can decrease to values very close to 0 for very high frequency ratios. So what we see is that the response in steady state reaches a maximum value if we excite the system 
with an excitation exactly uh, with a frequency exactly the same as its natural frequency and that's what we call the resonance phenomenon so the important thing to note here is that we can change the amplitude of our displacement in steady state response simply by changing the frequency of the excitation see we're not changing anything else in our system the mass stiffness and damping nor even the force amplitude we're simply changing its frequency and with that we're changing the amplitude of our response and it's interesting for us to identify regions in this figure where we have the amplification greater than one and where we have the amplification lower than one so if we want to make our response large we want to work in this region and if we want to make our response small we want to work in this region of the system now let's see what happens to this figure if we start changing the damping ratio as we've seen here in the expression our response depends on the uh, frequency ratio R but also on the damping factor zeta. So let's change zeta and see what happens. So in order to do that I will change the script a bit. I saved it as a different file name and I'll define a range of values for this damping coefficient. So let's say we go from 10 to 100 in intervals of 10 I'll change the name of this variable so to say that this is the variable uh, which will have the different values to do this variation on the uh, damping coefficient we see that if we change the damping on the system the natural frequency doesn't change nor does the frequency ratio nor does the static delta but the damping factor zeta that will change so from here to here we'll put this uh, four lines here inside a for loop and inside this for loop we'll change the value of the damping coefficient that we have in the system so here's my for loop and inside it we'll have to update the value of C according to where we are in the for loop like so so for each iteration of the for loop we're going to um, update the value of damping and calculate our amplification factor as uh, or according to these expressions here and what I'm going to do is that for each of these values I'm going to plot a line in the same figure so one on top of the other so I will use the hold on uh, command in Octave to say that I'm going to plot various things in the same figure and I'll move this line here plot also inside my for loop like so so for each iteration I will plot another line and the same figure one on top of the other so in the end we have a figure with all these lines together and we can try to understand what is going on so if we run this script like so we see a figure similar to this and I can tell you that this uh, figures that have higher amplitude are the curves for lower damping values for lower zeta so zeta is decreasing in this direction as the curves have lower and lower amplitude so we can see that if we increase the damping on the system we decrease the amplitude that we have for uh, or along all the frequency ratio and we see that this um, change is more uh, pronounced here close to the natural frequency so close to the resonance phenomena we see that small increases in damping uh,
causes a great decrease in this um, amplitude of the response close to 1. For frequency ratio much larger than 1, this change in the damping doesn't have much of an effect. So this is what we call the frequency response of uh, harmonic uh, force or of a dynamical system subjected to an harmonic force.